Hi. Hi. A deep bow to both of you. Thank you so much. Um, I really feel like listening is going to get us out of this morass, and I'm just wondering how you've been taught or how you've learned to listen more deeply. Uh, for me, it, it, meditation practice, contemplative practice, has taught me not so much how to sit in the quiet, although it has, but how to not believe everything I think. <laughs> so sitting with my own mind, um, I get to know the nature of, of the mind. And, and that, uh, it just gives me a, enough breath and enough space that I can not have to fill the space with my own words, although you'd never be able to tell from this weekend, but generally my regular life, I, I'm able to um, pause and, and pay attention. Did you hear what she said? Don't believe everything you think? It's a bumper sticker I used to buy for students in world religions. Yeah. Oh, maybe that's where I got it. <laughs> So I'm afraid to say anything because it might be on your sermon. <laughs> so. Stay out of my head. <laughs> <laughs> who, who teaches us to, to listen? Nobody. It's built in, unless you have some biological disorder. No one teaches you how to listen, you just listen. One of the things that really worries me is that we complicate the simple. We make it very, oh, you have to learn to listen. Well, where do you do that? Oh, well, we have seminars, we have workshops, we have things that cost money. You go to these, you learn how to listen. How did you even know they were there? You were already listening, right? You had to hear it to know that you had to go to learn. Oh, I have to go to learn how to listen. You already know how to listen. Shut up and listen, right? And don't imagine, oh, there's something magical I have to listen to. That's just another scam. It's just another way of avoiding the truth. The truth is always present. It's always within. It's always without. It's always permeating everything. Shekhinah, Sophia, Chachman, permeating everything. When we complicate the simple, we simply create an excuse for not awakening. So quickly, book of Deuteronomy, Moses says to the people, if you think it, truth, awakening, wisdom, is in the sky, then you say, who's going to fly up to the sky to bring it down to us that we can do it? And if you think that it's across the ocean, you're going to say, who's going to sail across the ocean and bring it back to us? No one can do that. And, and what he's saying is, don't make excuses, because then the next line is, the truth, the wisdom, the, the enlightenment, the awakening, it's in your heart and in your mouth, on your heart and in your mouth that you should do it. Jesus, Logia 3, if I'm not mistaken, but I could be, in the Gospel of Thomas says, if your teachers come and they tell you that the kingdom is in the sky, because you know, it's this, they've read Deuteronomy, they're, paraphr they're riffing off of it. If your teacher tells you that it's in the sky, then the birds will get there before you. And if they tell you it's across the sea, then the fish will get there before you. But it's neither of those things. The kingdom is within you and around you. But we don't trust ourselves. And so we run to people who tell us that we shouldn't and sell us what we've already got. And because we've already got it, we never get it. And we just keep spending more money and wasting more time. With all due respect. <laughs> to the writers and speakers present here. I have a different answer. Where's the, where's the, there you are. And it's not other than, it's, it's just different. And I think there's extroversion and introversion in your question as well, because, because I do know people who don't know what they think till they hear what they say. And, but I know a ton of people who have a hard time listening because no one listens to them. You know? And so it, it begins to be a, a human job, a way to, 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 to give a blessing, is, is to be the, the person who's willing to ask a question about 
the story that was just told instead of coming in with the matching story. You know, the, the well, my, or I remember when I, I, I remember somebody telling me once, you know, there were two kinds of conversations, and one you came out of thinking how interesting the other person was, and one you came out of surprised by how interesting you were <laughs> because of the person who listened to you. So I've always wanted to be the latter. I just thought how wonderful. I listened to somebody, I'm here with my beloved Ed, and we were just in a, you know, taking a lift from the airport, and he talked about a course he'd taught in the Episcopal Church for a long, long time, and that he missed it. And the person we were riding said, what do you miss most? I just thought that was so lovely and rare, because I noticed it. You know, it was drawing out the story. So it seems to me that's a way every day somebody can be a blessing to someone else. What did you miss most? How do you fill your cup? You know, what stood out for you? And to really care about that seems huge to me. So it's more of a discipline for me than a natural thing or even, you know, something that I cultivate interiorly, though both of those make perfect sense to me. So I would have, so, so yeah, right? I'm saying yes to that. So the, what you have to learn is to, to attend to be present, and then the listening happens. And maybe that's worth paying for. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate uh, all of your being here this weekend. Uh, I want you to indulge me in saying this. It might not matter to anybody else here. It'll embarrass my wife. But I just want to point out that tomorrow night, Sunday night, February 9th, is the 56th anniversary of the Beatles' first appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show. How many people here remember that night? That, amazing, that brings us together, right? It's, just, it's incredible, the joy and the power that the Beatles have had in this incarnation. I mean, it's just extraordinary. You know, this gives me such hope about being in some kind of care home when I'm older, because, <laughs> because all the people on their headphones will be listening to Mick Jagger singing Brown Sugar, you know? It's just, how good is that? Did, did you see the movie yesterday? I mean, that's what it's about. What would the world be like without, without the music of the Beatles? Yeah. Yeah. I also love being with people my age because they stay on topic so well. And now Topo Gijo. <laughs> you don't remember Topo Gijo? He was on the Ed Sullivan Show all the time. He was the little puppet. <laughs> this is an announcement from the uh, woman who had lost her her uh, sc scarf this morning. <laughs> I just wanted to say that there has been quite a bit of discussion about the feminine divine this weekend. And as a Puerto Rican woman and Association of Roman Catholic Women Priests, we are transforming our church in inclusive communities where all are welcome to celebrate sacraments in a community of equals. We are often asked by the institutional people in the institutional church, are you leaving the church or are you starting a new church? No, we are not leaving the church, we are not starting a new church, but we are leading the church. And so we would like to offer for anyone who wants more information about this, we have a website, arcwp.org. That's Association of Roman Catholic Women Priests. Thank you. More questions for our keynoters? <laughs> 